Hello everyone, I'm Black Marvin, I'm a progressive psychedelic trance artist, I'm a professional sound designer, and I'm also a teacher for electronic music production. Today, I have a really cool technique to show you inside Vital, and it is involving the harmonics stack function. We're going to make a pad with this technique today, and you'll see that it really has a unique sound and some new possibilities, and I think it's somewhat an overlooked uh, feature of Vital. If you're looking for some presets, there's Exogenesis for Vital that is out now on the Fractal Sound Store. It is 100 presets for Vital. And there's some pads in there uh, that have been made using this technique. There's also many other techniques that have been used in this pack to create the most uh, complex and intricate presets. So I'm going to show also uh, some of these techniques in future videos. So if you don't want to miss this, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel so you'll be up to date when these videos are going to be released. So now let's dive in and make some complex and celestial pads inside Vital. We are inside Vital and this is what we're going to do today. It's a complex pad and it's utilizing a specific technique using the harmonics stacks right here. And that's what we're going to check. And if I take a look inside uh, Exogenesis here, this uh, vital bank, uh, there's other pads that utilizes this technique. This is elevation. The reason why I'm telling you this is we're not just going to do a carbon copy of the first preset or a carbon copy of this one. Um, we're going to make a whole new preset, but we're going to utilize that same technique, the harmonics stack, and we're going to have a result that is going to be similar to these. Um, you know, it's going to give us that uh, a, a similar timber and a similar feeling, but it's not going to be the same. Uh, I want to do a whole new preset because I think it's fun. So we're going to have similar result, but with a whole new thing. And in order to do a whole new thing, we're going to go and initialize the preset. Now, what you will need is some expressive wavetables. Um, an expressive wavetable is, is just a wavetable that has a lot of harmonic content and that has some nice morphing uh, capabilities. There is some really great ones uh, provided with Vital. But I'm going to use uh, my own because I know them very well. Um, and, you know, I, I, I made them for a reason. I'm going to use them. Uh, so this is the Quantum Fold wavetables from Fractal Sounds. And I'm inside the Sparks folder. I know that this specific folder has the kind of expression and the kind of timbre that I'm looking for, uh, for this kind of sound. So you're looking for something sparky, but um, that is not... Uh, too noisy because there are some wavetables that when they're really expressive and they have a lot of harmonic content they almost become noisy and we don't want that but we want something that is sparkly and expressive and I think that there's at least one inside this sparks folder that is going to be good for this kind of sound so first let's uh, drop it a bit by at least uh, one octave I prefer to listen to wavetables on lower octaves mm -hmm. first let's get that around here that's good that might be a bit too um too crunchy not bad uh let's see like this yeah it's a bit too crunchy yeah this one has it it's less crunchy but it's a bit nosy too nosy for what we want to achieve Yeah, I think this one, uh, this one's really good for that. Okay, so we'll get a lot of unison. So around eight voices. And that already sounds cool, but this is where it gets really interesting. So you have the stack option here, and it's basically a bunch of algorithms. You have some chords option. You have some uh, harmonics. We're going to use that. There's octaves. Uh, there's one where the center is dropped by 12. Uh, semitone. There's a lot of really cool combination here, but harmonics is 
what we're going to look at today. That's what the technique involves. And the thing is, instead of stacking uh, just voices, regular voices uh, for unison, it's now stacking harmonics. Um, let's see if we can have a good visual inside a meter for fun. So I open uh, Wave Candy from FL Studio and we're going to have a good visual on what's happening here. This is the unison read. And this is the harmonics. So same settings, but really changing the algorithms because we're still at eight voices, uh, but it's not unison anymore. It's uh, harmonics. Now that we have our harmonics stacks set up, uh, we're just going to go back here and make sure that there is some Wait, yeah, that we're basically going to go in the middle and you'll see because that table spread is going to be linked to that uh, that sort of portion here. So if we put it in the middle, we're going to have access to modulations like this and modulations like this. So, for example, now let's check the table spread and then we'll do the spectral spread and distortion spread after. Now I'm going to put a random modulator on the table spread and I'm going to put it here because I want it to go all the way, like potentially modulate everything. So, so the random is going to pick a value from here to here each time and it's going to go and I want it slow. So two for one. So it's going to be slowly drifting through different values. We're going to go back in here. We're going to choose a spectral morph. So maybe vocode. You can hear that this uh, morph, the vocal, it sometimes when you're dealing with uh, something that is too uh, slicey and crispy and a bit too aggressive and resonant in the high frequencies, the vocode uh, morph sort of tames it down. And that's desirable in this case. And uh, now let's see if we put the random modulator on the spectral spread. I'm going to bypass this one because I wa want you to just hear this one. I could honestly just almost use this modulation. It's softer, but let's uh, bring this one back. And we're going to do the same thing with the wave morph here. And this one corresponds to the distortion spread. Uh, maybe sync is going to be quite intense. I think format will do it. Now let's check what it does manually. <laughs> it's very intense. So maybe I'll keep the modulation to a lower level. That's very cool. Uh, we're going to put the iRes uh, wavetable because we want smooth interpolation on and that corresponds to that function. I just want to show you also a little trick you can do. If you want a harsher result, you can put more detune range because in this case for the detune, you know, usually in the unison, there's a certain detune amount. Uh, but in this case now, since it's harmonics, uh, it's it's not the, your regular detune, but it's going to uh, put more detune in between the harmonics and you'll sometimes get a harsher result. And sometimes a harsher result can be actually benefit. Maybe you're looking for something darker, more like cinematically aggressive um, and that can help. I think I'm going to stay with this range, but I just want to show you what it does. Actually, Never mind, like Justin Bieber said, never say never. I think I prefer this detune range now. It sounds uh, less cheap. Not that it was sounding cheap, but it sounds even more complex and real. Now that's what we have. And we can play it on a lower octave.
you can hear that it's crazy cool but if you want to have also something more tame i would recommend just having much smaller modulation because in the end there's still a lot of movement and that's this movement that makes the you know the the preset morph and the, the wavetable and the sound morph uh, but if you want something more tame i would just recommend having uh, smaller values of modulation now if you want something more complex we can try to fit in i started to fit in actually a second oscillator uh, if we start back from nothing I chose Meteor, so we're just going to focus on this one, and the Meteor wavetable, uh, it's Meteor 001, it sounds like this. Very resonant, and I wanted a layer that was sounding a bit uh, more closer to a sine wave, like cosmic stuff, and by the way, just look at the, you know, the meter, how, it's, how it looks. I just thought it was looking very cool. Now, I'm going to get that in the middle. Um, and I'm going to drive in some uh, unison voices. I'm going to make sure it is, you know, here it's already on harmonics. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did for oscillator one, but much faster because you know now everything that I did. So I'm going to do this again, but faster. This kind of sound is very resonant, so I'm going to drive in an EQ here and remove some of the frequencies. I'm really sad that uh, the EQ for Vital is very basic because sometimes we would need to remove more stuff. So I think I'm going to go here and get actually a notch something like this and try to see if I can remove also some frequencies with this one. Yeah, that, that works. Now, uh, spectral spread, let's maybe get random amplitude. distortion spread I think the format is quite aggressive that 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 makes a lot of noticeable differences yeah you can hear it so I'm gonna put the super small value and very uh, long uh, time so it's cool because you sort of I don't know if you hear but you have like the bass tone and you have some sparkles going on up in the air and with this one it sounds like this now i'm gonna add some reverb i think i'm gonna keep it really basic because i, I really want the complexity uh, to be here i want the focus to be here so i'm gonna put reverb and now it sounds like this And I'm going to stop here. I think uh, it's there's some wisdom into not overdoing things. And I think now it's just a perfect preset, actually. You know, there's some, I wouldn't add anything. Or maybe if I would add a third oscillator, I would set up some macros to uh, just give the user the option to bring it in or bring it off. But even here, I feel that with these two tones, there's already enough stuff going on. What we could add is uh, a filter going on, like uh, some bandpass, something moving up here. But yeah, I kind of really wanted to showcase that technique and how I don't feel I need to add more stuff 
and I think it's complete now in my and that would be a, a great preset if I wanted to uh, include that in a bank I just need to set up some macros uh, so maybe give the user some options between uh, the morphing here and maybe actually something like detune range uh, just give the user the option of more detune range I don't know if you hear, but when there's more detune, it sounds a bit wilder and, and a bit crazier, uh, a bit more mean too. Yeah, I'm going to stop here. That's an awesome reset. And that was the harmonics stack technique for pads. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you will be able to integrate this technique um, into your own sound design. And, you know, I created a pad there, but I never really tried it on anything different than a pad i'm sure there's some really cool result that we can have on other type of sounds some leads you've heard that it really morphs the sound in a, a really unique way so i really like this technique don't forget to check out exogenesis for vital and stay tuned also uh for everything fractal sounds related because obviously i know the product q line and there's a lot of stuff for vital coming up some cinematic stuff, some acid stuff, techno, and of course, Psytrance material. So if you're in need uh, for looting to add to your uh, vital arsenal, you'll be served. If you need some help with music production, um, there's my community of students, which is built to provide mentorship support. There's some group lessons, some one-to-one -one lessons, a lot of archived content. So don't forget to check that out. The link will be in the description. And until then, I will see you in another video I'll be producing.